Uh, hi. Uh, now, uh, today I decided to do a functions overview and setup of the Casio G-Shock GA100. Uh, this is a very popular model and you can see it a lot on people in the wild, should we say, uh, in public. Uh, it's one of the most seen G-Shocks. Uh, but from my personal experience, a lot of people wearing this G-Shock buy it because of the looks and don't really understand all the functions of the watch, uh, which is why I decided to do this video. There are a lot of reviews, so I won't be going into details and doing a review, but I'll just go through the functions and the setup and how everything works. So this is the home screen. Uh, it shows uh, the date, uh, day, time, and day. Uh, but if you press this button, uh, this lower button here, you can go, uh, you can toggle uh, between this display showing uh, the time, uh, the hours and minutes, or month and date. Uh, why? Because if you do it uh, like this, you can check whether or not these uh, analog hands are uh, where they're supposed to be. Because if they're not, and that can happen, it's true, it can happen very rarely, but sometimes it can happen. And in, in that case, you need to do a correction, which I will show in the end of, the, this, of this video. But uh, this is the way to check whether or not uh, everything is okay. So the small needle has to show to zero like this. It has to be tilted like this and show to zero on this little sub-dial. While the big hands need to be in sync with the time displayed here. So if you have everything displayed like this, if this display is showing the dates and month, you need to toggle it so it displays the time and then you check uh, whether or, or not this display and these hands are in sync. In this case they are, so there's no need to do any correction. So we can move on to the setup. But in case you need to do a correction, you will see in the end of the video how to do that. Uh, okay, so uh, while in this mode, uh, this upper button is used for light, and this button is used to cycle through different modes. Uh, if you want to set up the watch, you need to press and hold the adjust button. And it's quite a long hold, more than three seconds. And once you do that, uh, the watch uh, will ask you to first select the time zone that you're in. So this has to be your home time time zone. And all the and the other uh, the world time function for other cities is based on what you say the time is in your home time in your home time so uh, in order to change this you can you go uh, backwards and forwards with these two buttons so this watch uh, allows you to increase and decrease the values and while in this mode the adjusting mode the mode button cycles you through different values so uh, time zone hours minutes months everything and you change the values with these two buttons so let's say uh, you want a different time zone, you select it wherever you are, but we'll leave it at Paris because that is my time zone. You press the mode to see what's next. The next is the DST, which is a daylight savings time. Uh, in, the, uh, in the summertime, it's supposed to be on if you're in a time zone that has DST. And uh, since it's winter time, uh, we'll put it off. We'll put it to off. Uh, the next press takes you uh, to the choice of 24 or 12 hour format so 12 hour as you see it's 6 p.m. if you put it to 24 or military time it will show you 18 uh, the next press takes you to the seconds reset and if you reset it before it reaches 30 the minutes will be unchanged if you change if you reset it after 30 like now let's do it the minutes will move one up to 35 uh, the next press takes you to the hours. Again, you can go upwards, backwards, and this takes you to minutes. Uh, we'll put minutes to 25 so we can move away the hands so they're not in the way. Uh, the next one takes you to the year. Again, up, back, uh, up, down, month, uh, date, and the day is determined automatically because it has a full auto calendar until the year 2099. And then another push of the mode button takes you to uh, illumination duration selection. So you can choose whether to have it on for three seconds or one second. So after you push the light button and release, it will either be one and a half second if it's LT1 
or if you put it to LT3, it will uh, be lit on for another three seconds after you release the button. And pressing the mode takes you back to the time setting. So it cycles through. So if you miss something, you just cycle again until you reach it. Once you've set up everything, you press the adjust button and the analog hands will set themselves up uh, in synchronicity with this. So this is when it comes to the home time uh, display. Uh, the, ne the other modes are a stopwatch, a timer, and a world time, and alarm. So let's do the stopwatch first. Uh, this watch has one of the best stopwatches that Casio makes. Uh, not only because it's a 100 hour stopwatch, whereas normal wa uh, stopwatches are 24 hours and some that are uh, worse are up to one hour, but it also measures uh, up to one thousandth of a second as it's displayed here. Also, it uses it has two modes for a stopwatch. If you press the adjust button, uh, while the stopwatch is not running, you can uh, toggle between these two modes. The first one is the split mode, which is the standard Casio stopwatch. So you can start it, stop it, reset it. You can do a split time. You start it, you press the adjust, and it shows the split time. Then resumes back to a stopwatch. You stop it, you reset it, and you can do the first and second time. You start the stopwatch. Pressing the adjust button shows the, let's say if you have two runners or two racers, the first one uh, crosses the line, you press this button, it shows its time, you take a note. When the second one passes through, you press this button and it shows his time and then you reset it. So that's the first mode and it's the standard stopwatch that's found on probably 90% of Casio watches. Uh, the second mode is the lap stopwatch. Uh, what that means is that once you start it and pressing the adjust uh, mode measures that lap and then the, the let's say we'll do a 10, 10, 10 second lap. You just did a 10 second lap and now as you can see it displays the time but pressing this again doesn't add up but restarts from zero and shows you the next lap and it says the number of laps. So again now this lap was 7 uh, seconds. This lap was three seconds. This lap was two seconds. So you get the picture. Uh, also, this lap time is displayed for 12, uh, 12 seconds, and then uh, the stopwatch resumes. So you'll see when 12 seconds passes there, you see it started going again. Uh, again, you can stop it and you can reset it. The only bad thing about this lap stopwatch is that it doesn't have lap memory like some better uh, stopwatches. The Casio makes so you can only take notes of your laps, but you ca it, they can be kept in memory so you can retrieve them later, which is a pity. If they added that, it would be a perfect stopwatch. Uh, also, there is another uh, hidden function. It's not really hidden, but many people don't know about it. Uh, if you noticed when I start the stopwatch and when I stop it, this little needle starts moving around and these segments get turned on and off. Uh, what this is, is actually an average speed uh, calculation. So the watch calculates the average speed uh, by itself, so you don't have to do it in your head. In your head. Uh, so let's switch to normal stopwatch. Uh, let's say you start a stopwatch and this is by default set to one mile or one kilometer. So let's say one mile. And uh, if you're doing 60 miles an hour, that's uh, 60 miles in 60 minutes, which means that one mile is one minute. So in that logic, if you go, uh, if you do it in 30 seconds, it's going to be 120 miles per hour because it's half. So we'll stop it at 30 seconds and this watch should display 120 miles or kilometers. So let's wait 30 seconds. 29, 30, there, and it said, you see, here you have 100, 12, 500, 800. so this is 100, and 10, 20, so 120 miles per hour, if you passed one mile in 30 seconds, let's reset it, by that logic, if you pay, if you passed uh, one mile in 15 seconds, that will mean that you're traveling at 240 miles per hour, so let's test that. So we'll stop the stopwatch once it reaches 15 seconds and the watch should display uh, uh, 240 miles an hour. So let's see. 12, 13, 14, 15. 
you see these two segments are 100. 100, 200, and 38 because I passed the 15 seconds by a couple of hundreds of a second. So it's 238, 39, somewhere around there. So as you can see, this is a nifty feature. Uh, let's say when I used to travel with a bus and we have mile markers on our highways, and I would always use a stopwatch and do the arithmetics in my head to see how fast the bus was going. But with this watch, you just stop the stopwatch and it does that by itself. Uh, also, uh, it can measure up to 1,800 miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Uh, uh, if you uh, do it over that speed, it's going to say over because it's not measurable by it. So let's say you do uh, one mile in one second start or half a second as you can see the little needle shows at over because you uh, went past the speed that it can display uh, now let's try and do uh, two seconds one mile in two seconds one two and a half let's say now this is measurable and not only that but as you can see these segments go up to 1000 but if the 1000 is displayed on like here and then there are segments after it that means that you start at 1000 so this is 1000 100 200 300 1400 and 50 60 70 so 100 uh, 1470 miles per hour if you do uh, one mile in 2.5 seconds and also one thing to note, because this has a bit of a, it's a bit of a homage to uh, aviation instruments. Uh, once you go past 1,200 kilometers per hour, uh, this little Mach uh, indicator uh, lights up here. And that's about it. Also, uh, this is set up by default for one mile or one kilometer, but you can set it to any distance you want. So uh, it, to do that, the stopwatch cannot be running, and then you press and hold the adjust button. Three or more seconds, and it switches to distance. So now you can enter any number between 1 and 99. And also, you can do uh, tens of the mile or kilometer so you can do 99.5 or something so if you're traveling by bike or if you're running or you're traveling i don't know with your car on a road trip uh, you can set up the distance here and start the stopwatch once you reach your destination when you stop the stopwatch it's gonna display the average speed that you had during that trip right over here uh, now I say it can do it for any distance because this goes to 99 but that's not limited to 99 because let's say if you had to travel 600 miles uh, you would set this up to 60 and then when you stop the stopwatch the speed that it displays you just add a zero to get uh, your average speed so this has almost uh, limitless possibility when it comes to distance it's a really cool feature and it's a good conversation starter and i was amazed at how little uh, how few people knew that their watches have that uh, they just assumed that this is a that they call it eye candy that is just spinning I don't know, without any sense when it's not true. It actually, it actually has a function and it serves a purpose. So that's about it when it comes to the stopwatch. Pressing the adjust exits the distance setting. So the next mode is a 24 hour timer and it's a standard Casio timer with auto repeat. Uh, you adjust it by pressing the adjust and you can adjust it from one minute up to 24 hours. So the smallest measure is one minute. It cannot set up the seconds. Also, if you start it with zero, it will go from 2359 downwards. Uh, one other thing to note is that while you hold the adjust button, you can adjust the hours, the minutes, and the cycle, whether it's, it's going to be a one-time timer or an auto-repeat timer. The auto-repeat timer, uh, in my opinion, is one of the most useful features that a watch can have. Uh, why? Well, if you're a sports person, it's good for interval training, but uh, regardless of that, uh, any person 
has had at least once in their life, uh, either for them or their children, uh, had to ha uh, take pills, let's say every eight hours or six hours when you're sick. So this allows you to set up the time for, let's say, eight hours and you switch on the auto repeat. And after eight hours have passed, and let's say you go back to once you start the timer, uh, you go back to the timekeeping mode. And every eight hours, this watch is going to beep letting you know that eight hours have passed and will restart by itself over and over and over again until you stop it. So it's a really cool feature that it's one of the favorite features uh, on any watch, to me at least. Uh, the next mode is the world time. Uh, you can, unfortunately, although it has a forward and backward button, in world time you can only uh, go in one direction because this button is used for uh, activating the light which is a shame. Uh, so anyways, if you select uh, a time zone, and let's say it's Tokyo, uh, it's displayed on this little screen here. Uh, this is the, the city code, and this is the time for that city. Uh, the analog hands will keep showing your home time. So let's say if you're flying to Tokyo, and you want uh, the main time to be Tokyo time, and your home time to be this on this little screen because that that way you're it's going to be easier for you to keep track of Tokyo time. Uh, you don't have to go through uh, through uh, modes and setting the home time and then going to world time and setting the world time back to your home time, but you can press these two buttons simultaneously and these two will switch. So now Paris is going to be I mean your home time is going to be on this small screen and the Tokyo time or the world time is going to switch to be the main time. Uh, also, if you travel back, you just press this, so this watch can toggle between these two. It's also a cool feature and one that I, that I really like. So let's switch it back. So that's when it comes to world time. Uh, the next function uh, is the alarm. And this, but I have to wait for it to complete the revolutions. Uh, uh, the alarm is, it has four uh, daily alarms. It has one snooze alarm and it has the sig or the hourly chime uh, you s toggle between the alarms by pressing the upper uh, the lower right button and as you can see you can toggle between them uh, to adjust to turn the alarm on or off you press the adjust button and as you can see uh, the alarm indicator is on as long as any at least one alarm is on uh, if you turn on the snooze alarm the SNZ indicator will be on. And also the hourly chime, if you press it, you see the SIG is going to be on. So now we've turned everything on. The snooze alarm, the daily alarm, and the SIG. Uh, the daily alarm is going to go off every day at the desired time that you've set up. You set it up just like the timer, just like the home time. You press and hold the adjust. And now you can set up the hours, uh, pressing the mode, you can set up the minutes, and there, you've set up the alarm. Then you can go to the second alarm, also set it third, fourth, and the snooze. The snooze alarm goes off, and if you turn it off, or if it uh, chimes everything, uh, if it chimes to the end, it will repeat itself in five minutes, and it will keep doing so until you go into the snooze alarm and turn it off. Uh, that's made for people that are very hard to wake up or <laughs> that fall asleep after they wake up. So it's a cool feature. And like I said, uh, the last one is the SIG, the hourly chime, whether you want it on or off. Uh, now let me just turn on the snooze. So as you can see, uh, the last thing over here that I haven't been able to turn on yet is the A light. What that means is that this watch has an automatic lighting system. Uh, so let's go back to home time. Uh, what that means is that uh, if you uh, turn on the auto lights, if you put your uh, hand arm horizontally and you tilt it to your face, uh, the watch will light up by itself. And you turn that on by pre holding and pressing, uh, pressing and holding the light button for more than three seconds. So we'll hold it there. The auto light is on. So you put it horizontally and then you flip it here and the light will go on like so. Okay, let's do it again. Horizontally, you flip it, the light goes on. 
This is a cool feature, but because this is not a solar watch, so it uses a conventional battery, it doesn't have a solar cell, so it cannot uh, tell by itself when it's dark and when it's uh, uh, day or when it's uh, in the light. So uh, unlike the solar uh, Casio watches that have full auto light where you turn it on and it keeps on all the time but works only in dark places, this one, after you turn it on, uh, it will work for six hours and then it will turn off. Then you have to turn it on again. Uh, why? Because it doesn't know when it's dark and when it's uh, day. So it would run up, run down the battery as you wear it because every time you tilt your wrist, it would turn on uh, the light. So that's why it turns it off by itself. Now that's about it when it comes to functions. And the last thing that I said I'm going to do at the end of this video is the hand correction. So if, let's say, this little needle doesn't show like this, but it's pointing any other direction, and you're not in the stopwatch mode, so it's not measuring the speed, but while you're in the home time, it shows anywhere else, it means that something is wrong. Also, if these hands are not in sync with the time displayed here, that also means that something is wrong. Uh, this can happen, sometimes because of a, a low battery, sometimes because of a hard knock or something. Uh, if, did, if this happens, the watch is not broken, but you just have to correct it. To correct it, you need to be in home time, I mean home screen, and uh, normal timekeeping, no adjusting, nothing, and then you just keep and hold the lower right button for more than three seconds. So press and hold. And now it will enter a hand setting mode. And as you can see, this little display here says sub, which means that now you're setting up the sub dial. And this sub dial has to point at 12 when you're setting it up. So let's say if this didn't point at 12, uh, unfortunately you can go only one way by pressing the lower right button. And you have to do it by pressing it you can't hold it won't go anywhere so you need to press it and press it until you do a full revolution so let's say if it wasn't aligned you need to press this until you align it exactly at 12 o'clock so let me just do it and this is a bit bothersome because you can't go both directions which is a pity there and now pressing the mode button switches to these hands. When you press the mode button, you can see that this time here is displaying zero hours, zero minutes. So it means that it has to point at midnight. So these hands have to stop at midnight. If they do not, you also set them up by pressing this. But I won't be doing that because it's going to take some time. So we'll just make sure that they stop at midnight. There, everything's all right. So once you've set up the hands and you're sure everything's lined up, you press the adjust button and it goes back to timekeeping mode. And that's about it. Uh, the only issues that I've seen with watches like this is that sometimes when their batteries get low, uh, the hands start acting weird. So if your hands uh, keep getting misaligned or something and you keep resetting them and they keep doing it, that means that your battery is probably about to die, so you just change the battery, do a reset, and everything should be fine. Uh, fine. Uh, other than that, I believe these watches are pretty bulletproof, and they're, like I said, very, very popular. Uh, I hope this video helped at least one person to understand completely the functions of this watch, because it really has the abundance of functions, but unfortunately, uh, many people don't understand them completely. I hope this video helps clarify that and hopefully it will help some people solve their problems if they're having hand alignment problems or anything. Well, that's about it, and thank you for watching. I hope it wasn't too bothersome because I can see now that it's been 24 minutes, so it's one of the longest videos I've made, and I've made it in one go, so yay. Anyways, thank you for watching, and bye.